I'm at Winter Soldier sitting with Salam Talib, an Iraqi citizen who experienced what it was like living in Iraq under Saddam and the U.S. occupation. In Saddam's time, I, uh, in 1998, um, I commit a crime, which is I give everybody internet for free. I hacked into the system, and I, I, I did that, and Saddam people get very angry, um, and they... After a long story, I had to flee the country. I went from Baghdad, I went to North Iraq, which is the only safe place you can go without a passport. In 2003, uh, the war happened, and uh, I have no uh, job as computer engineer. So what I did, um, I worked as a translator for the journalists, because I speak a little bit of English at the time. And then I became journalist myself when the lack of journalists happened in Iraq, that uh, it was too dangerous for them to come, so I was doing it myself. Um, then um, uh, I have a uh, th direct threat, and I was shot at and my friend was killed in the state of me, so I had to, um, to leave Iraq, and, uh, and, now in the US. and now I'm in U.S. What is your view of the soldiers who come back and testify to these atrocities? I think they are braver than the ones they came out, and they came back and they didn't uh, say anything about their, uh, what they have done, um, because at least these people, they think they did something wrong um, in a human level, forget our politics. Uh, in a human level, they know that they came with something that they should have done. As someone who's seen the occupation firsthand, do you think the U.S. occupation of Iraq has made Iraq safer? Um, there are two things we are talking about here. There's Saddam and there is the occupation. That's the only two um, examples that the Iraqis have seen, and me, myself, that's the only two examples that I have seen. And if I to compare the two examples, uh, the hell of Saddam, it was, you know, shallower than the hell of the Americans. Military, because what happens, uh, we have a military in the street, a military that doesn't speak your language, and they don't, they think anybody with beard, he's, Everybody looks the same for them. Um, they're too scared, and they're kids. With this conference going on right now, with people vocally on television, with media everywhere, talking about the atrocities that occur every day, some dissenters say this is putting the U.S. troops at risk. That by doing this, you're only going to make it worse for those who are still in Iraq. Do you agree with that? Um, I have just one answer for that, which is, um, the difference between knowing and not knowing, it's between being Iraqi or American. So, um, do you think that the people that are attacking the U.S. troops, they don't know what that these soldiers have done? Or they don't know the soldiers what they are doing? Every single child in Iraq knows that. Every single child has seen it. It's in every single street. You don't need a, a soldiers to come out in the media. These soldiers are not telling the Iraqis, they're telling the Americans. And they are not telling them really what's going on. They are telling them 10% of what's really going on. So they, they will put the, the U.S. In, in danger. The U.S. Are, the U.S. troops are already in danger. They are already in danger because they are doing these things.